Hey guys, what's up? It's April. Today I'm going to share with you all the books that I read during the month of July and it was my best reading month so far this year. I believe I read 20 books. Yay! So the first book I read was Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, and this is my third Morgan Matson book and I loved it. I think it's my second favourite behind Since You've Been Gone. Um, it definitely made me cry. It was beautiful. It's just a gorgeous summer contemporary that I read in the middle of winter because I am weird. If you haven't read Morgan Matson, I highly recommend you do. She is a fantastic author. I ended up giving this a four and a half out of five stars just because it contains one of my most hated tropes ever. But I won't go into that. I won't go into that. I don't want to spoil anything but I still loved it. It was great. And I read When You're Back by Abby Glines, which is the 12th book in the Rosemary Beach series. And you all know it's my favorite new adult series ever. It's fantastic. But, but, but I did have some problems with this book. It's definitely my least favorite Abby Glines book I've ever read. I just, I had a lot of problems with it, but I did write a little review about that. If you want to check that out, I will leave it right here. No, there, mm-hmm. Ended up giving that one a three out of five stars. Then Chelsea and I, we read a book together every month and this month we chose to read The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This was so surprising. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. It was absolutely fantastic. It's basically set in a contemporary setting except the town that these people live in they coexist with like fairies and, and the forest surrounding them is very mystical and there's a glass coffin in the middle of the woods with a sleeping prince and he's been sleeping there for who knows how long but one day he wakes up and it's just oh my gosh the feels i shipped some of these characters together so hard it's not even funny it did get a little confusing towards the end because it was just so like Fast. It, like, it just all went so fast, that ending. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. The next book I don't currently have on me, I'm lending it out to a friend. It is The Sacred Lies of Minnow Bly by Stephanie Oakes. So this girl, Minnow, has spent the majority of her life living in the middle of the woods as a part of this crazy cult. And little do any of the other people in the cult know that she's been sneaking off um, most nights to hang out with a guy called Jude who also lives in the woods, but he lives just in a cabin with his family. And so things happen and she's caught escaping and they cut off her hands and something happens to the cult community and then she ends up in juvie and it's just insane, but it's told so well. And I love, love how Stephanie Oakes went about incorporating religion into it uh, I just love how she was like, choose for yourself, you know, not just what your parents believe in, what do you believe in? And I really liked that. So yeah, I ended up giving it a four and a half out of five stars as well. And I read a really, really, really disappointing book and that's Hello I Love You by Katie M. Stout. I have a video review of this, I will link it here if you want to hear me rant because I gave this book one star. It was awful. The main character was the most unlikable main character ever. She was racist, she was just horrible, she was nosy, she was just awful. It was just so bad, it was just so bad. <laughs> so then the Cramathon happened and I have a vlog for it. I will link it here if you want to check it out. But I'll just quickly go through the books that I read. So I read The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I ended up giving this three stars because I didn't really understand the ending and it was just kind of really odd, but yeah, I, I still don't really know how I feel about this. Then I read Forever Young by One Direction. Nobody, nobody. Sorry. I gave this three out of five stars because it was cute, but you know, it's not as good as their most recent book. Then I reread The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson, which is one of the best fantasy books I've ever read and I loved it just as much as the first time. And obviously I gave this five stars because it's one of the best things ever. Then I DNF'd One Piece Volume 10. I just wasn't in the mood and it was just like, 
Ugh, I just, nah. Then I read Kiro's Emily by Abby Glines. This is number 10 in the Rosemary Beach series, but it's like a side novella. It's like not necessary to read, but I did. And I'm so glad I did because it was beautiful. I loved it. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Then I read I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. And I was really shocked after reading the first chapter. So I read the first chapter and I hated it. I hated it so much because every freaking sentence was a metaphor. I'm just like, stop. But then that was the only chapter that was like that. The rest of the book was really good. But yeah, I don't know, just, yeah, I gave it four out of five stars. It's not the best book I've ever read, but I can definitely see why a lot of people love it. The Cramathon ended while I was part of the way through The Heart of Betrayal. So after that, I finished it. And this is the sequel to The Kiss of Deception. And it just came out last month and it was fantastic. I gave it five stars as well. It was a lot slower than the first book, but I had no problem with that, which is weird because usually I do but it just had so much character development. I That was all I wanted to know about. It was just so good. It don't fit. Sorry, Selena. Then I read This Raging Light by Estelle Law. This one actually comes out in December, I believe, but I have a written review of it. If you want to check it out, I will link it here somewhere, but um, I was really disappointed with this book. It's a contemporary that's been getting a lot of good reviews from reviewers who have received review copies. So I requested it from NetGalley, but it was just nothing memorable for me at all. I gave it two out of five stars. The next book I ended up DNFing, and that was Inherit the Stars by Tessa Elwood. And I was really looking forward to this because it was the start of a new sci-fi trilogy, and it just, the premise was fantastic. But it was just, I couldn't. I was 25% through and I just couldn't go on because there was absolutely no world building. And it's set in space with all these unique and different planets, yet we heard nothing about them. I mean, that could have changed throughout the book, but I was 25% of the way through and things just weren't described enough. I just didn't, no, it was just, ugh. I have a review of that as well if you want to check it out. Then I read another review book which I received from Hardy Grant Egmont, so thank you guys so much. It is The Flywheel by Erin Go Gold. <laughs> this is a YA contemporary following a girl who is questioning her sexuality and it was really realistic and great and the characters were awesome. I have a review of this one as well if you want to check it out. Um, it was cute, but you know, it was not my favorite thing in the whole world but it was cute and i gave it three and a half stars then i read another review book this one's from quirkus books and it is the lost and the found by cat clark it follows this girl and her sister was kidnapped when she was five years old and then all of these years later her sister reappears and she's 19 now she's a woman and she has to sort of go through, you know, re-entering society after what happened to her. And it was fantastic. It was more of like a thriller. And I just kept flipping those pages. It was just so exciting. It was fantastic. I have a review of this as well, if you want to check it out. But I highly recommend this one. It's out now. So definitely check it out. It was great. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars. Okay, so then it was time for TBR Takedown and I didn't do too great. I read The Bad Beginning by Lemony Stickett, the first book in the series of Unfortunate Events series. I gave it three stars. I mean, like it says that it's going to be depressing, but oh my God, it was depressing. I mean, it's a really interesting premise. I'm sure if I was younger, I would have just like eaten it up. It would have been fantastic, but just meh. So that completed the challenge of read a first book in the series, and then I completed another challenge, read a sequel, when I read The Reptile Room by Lemony Snicket, and I gave this one a three stars as well. Again, I mean, it was fun, I guess, but also really, really, really sad, but it's just, I'm not really into it, so I decided to just stop after the second book. I gave it three stars again. And I don't think I'll continue on with the series, it's just not my thing. And then I read Until Friday Night by Abby Glines. This is the first book in her upcoming YA series. And 
This was amazing. I have a video review of it. I will link it here. Oh my gosh. This was amazing. Five stars. Loved it. Loved it. Abby Lines is bae. Even though this is a young adult book, it is definitely very, very mature. It has very mature themes and sexual content and lots of swearing and stuff. So just be wary of that. Um, this comes out on the 25th of August. This didn't complete any of the challenge for TBR Takedown, but I just really wanted to read it. So then I read Dumplin by Julie Murphy. Oh my gosh, this book. Firstly, I just want to say thank you to Penguin for sending this to me because it was absolutely fantastic. I am going to do a video on it very soon and it's also becoming a movie and it's not even out yet. So how great is that? This completed the challenge of reading a book from your last haul, so nailed it. This book was five stars. It was absolutely fantastic. It's about an overweight girl who enters a beauty pageant and it's so much more than that though because I feel like so many people can relate to this. I feel like no matter who you are, you would find this book relatable because I feel like no one is 100% content with what they look like. And uh, this was amazing. It comes out in September, so keep your eyes open. It is not one to miss. It was so good. Another one of the challenges for TV I Take Down was to read a book you've had on your shelf for over a year. And I got about halfway through Just One Day by Gail Foreman before the month was up, so I didn't finish it in time. And then I was also supposed to read Fahrenheit 451 for a book that's out of your comfort zone, but I just couldn't get it done because I had uni this month and I had work and it was just meh. So yeah, that's it for my July wrap up. Let me know what you guys read and I will see you really, really soon for other things. Goodbye.